everybody welcome back to the royal kingdom estate platform today we are posted at site this is gray city phase one and if you've been on the channel you definitely recognize this building right here it's a project that we've been covering since it started since the foundation was dug and today we are right here at this stage so i am joined by engineer desmond and site engineer george and today we're going to speak on the updates that we have right here on this project hello sir hi Adwa. how are you doing very well um i have engineer here yes Mr. George. Um, i think he's on site pushing all this uh, getting the instructions and all yes please. Uh, we are pleased to have you here once again thank you for having me i've been here since we started this project it's been a while since i came to cover it but i see a lot is happening right now i can see the demarcations very very properly and i see some board works happening as well what do we have? Okay, so I think I will start and an engineer will also continue from here. Yes, please. There's a reason why we are sitting on the, on this uh, beams. Mm -hmm. We call them beams. Beams, okay. Now, they are supposed to be strong enough to be able to carry the weight of the building. Okay. Now, if you look at the, the width and the size of this building, mm -hmm. it's so huge. It is. That uh, you want to avoid stuff such as cracks okay. whatsoever in the building. So what we are doing currently is what we call ground beams. Ground beams, okay. So I'm going to be explaining a few things as we move on. Yes, please. Now, I mentioned that we have various types of concrete. Mm -hmm. We have mass concrete. For the purpose of this discussion, I'll just restrict myself to mass and reinforced concrete. concrete. Engineer, what is a reinforced concrete? Reinforced concrete is basically concrete that is infused with reinforcement. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you see over here. Yes, please. This is concrete. Uh huh. This is block work, so I guess we say bricks. Okay. Now between this and this, you see that there are rods in here. Yes. So this becomes a reinforced concrete. Okay. We call this block footings. Mm -hmm. Underneath here is concrete. Concrete. But it is mass concrete. It does oh. not have reinforcement in it. Inside, okay. There is only reinforcement at the base of this pillar mm -hmm. that we referred to in previous videos as what we call the pad. Yeah. So that goes down 0 0.5 meters, 0 0.15 meters, meters okay. more than the actual strip foundations that, that we, we have. have. Okay. Now, because of the nature of this building, mm -hmm. how huge mm -hmm. it is, um, the structural engineers thought it wise to do proper beams. Okay. So if you look at all our structures that we have around, mm -hmm. uh, when we are doing the flow, we normally start with the beams. Okay. And we are not using 8 mm, we are using 10 mm stirrups. We call them stirrups or links. Mm -hmm. We are using 16 mm top bars and then uh, bottom bars. Okay. Why did you choose to go for these? Because these ones are one of the best to be able to ensure that the weight that will be put on this mm -hmm. should be sustainable. Okay. So what we are doing now is what we call the dead load. Okay. There is a dead load now. Mm -hmm. So every load which is going to come on this one, the block works, there's another beam, the pillars, mm -hmm. they are all dead loads. Okay. So what is happening is that now at this point, these particular footings, mm -hmm. we are trying to take off most of the load on it. The load should be on the pillar, mm -hmm. to the pillar, transmitted by the beams. The beams, okay. So going forward, the beams are going to carry the load, mm -hmm. transmit it onto the pillars. Mm -hmm. The pillars gives it to the path foundation. Mm -hmm. The path gives it onto the earth. Okay. So this is not going to struggle. Exactly. I see. The footings will be able to just stay solid. It exactly. won't be able to cut. It won't necessarily have to carry unnecessary weight. Exactly. For there to be cracks in. Absolutely. I see. And this is 0 0.45 meters. Okay. What we're doing at this stage is that we are casting 0 0.30 or 0 0.3. Uh, 3. There, yes. That's 300. Okay. First. And then after the 300, we are going to cut the 0 0.15 for the entire flow for this particular space. Okay. So you see, it's time consuming. And these are a few things that sometimes some people want to run away from. Yeah. They want to cut costs yeah. as much as possible. But yeah. there is one thing about construction. Anytime you cut costs, you give yourself other problems. Mm -hmm. So that is why we are using the right materials, okay. the right rods. Mm -hmm. So you can see that first of all, 
we have casted our corner pillars already. Okay. And we are now going to cast the next pillar or the next uh, uh, ground beam. Mm -hmm. Then when we finish, we'll board again and cast the final one. Wow. So it's it's a painful process. process. There's a lot of steps to go exactly. through. Exactly. But you need to be able to take your time and go through them. I see. Again, after all this, okay. you can see what we have here. We are going to have what we call the hardcore feel. Mm -hmm. And these are the stages that sometimes we want to let our clients know. Yeah. We don't want to have anything like settlement mm -hmm. under the earth. So I will explain what settlement is. Now, naturally, under this earth, yeah. there is movement. Yes. There are places where sometimes you have high density, uh, porousness mm -hmm. is there and all. Yeah. So what happens is that underneath the earth, we sometimes do, do not have so much uh, solidity to be able to ensure that building is well field yeah so when we come to the hardcore field we take our time mm -hmm. to make sure it is well compacted okay compaction is done first of all with soil that is not clay mm -hmm. it should be free from any unwanted materials right. such as rubber mm -hmm. plants mm -hmm. plants will decay when they decay they form voids or holes underneath right. the building so we take our time we make sure we use water mm -hmm. because like I mentioned in the previous videos, the sand, as it is, it, it is being poured in, yeah. is a disturbed soil. Yeah. So because it is disturbed, you need to take your time for compaction to be well done mm -hmm. before we put on our DPM. Right. So after you fill it, you water it, you wait for it to settle, you go again because it has to be, you know, compact for enough, properly. I see. Wow, construction is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you see, you have to, and, and let me say this. Mm -hmm. These are the stages when, when we, we get to the superstructure, yeah. it's so easy. We just start flying. Right. But at this stage, you need to be able to ensure the right the thing things are done. Point. Yes. For example, we are going to have a DPM place. Yeah. The DPM will go through these rods. Mm -hmm. And you have to ensure they, those things are properly checked. Yeah so that you are able to ensure that what is happening here there will not be dampness rising up to this point right so it's painful mm -hmm. but you ought to take your time and go through it exactly. so you're able to have the best of the best i understand perfectly basically if the base is strong enough the building will be healthy absolutely i see wonderful the boardings let's come to the boardings i see boards all around yep. i saw the carpenter you know working very 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 hard to board the enforcements that we have so what's going to happen to them so like i was explaining i think i'll leave this for engineer to also explain hello mr george so like my boss was uh, saying earlier on yeah this boards are put in place to receive the concrete that we are going to pour mm -hmm. imagine we are going to pour the concrete about 300 or 350 up yeah then we remove it and then continue before the oversight or the bed will come okay so this is what is going to receive the concrete at the initial stage mm -hmm. before we complete by that i see and it's going to go all, all around, round. all around yes wow wherever you see reinforcement mm -hmm. you are going to do that over there. everywhere then we fill mm -hmm. the compact mm -hmm. then the oversight or the bed come on top i see <laughs> hello i see you over there you're doing a very good job thank you wow chief this is this is just <laughs> <laughs> please okay Ugh. This is serious, serious, so serious work So it should be strong enough for you to be able to stand on. Yeah, as, for you as to I got down, it didn't on. even move. No, it shouldn't move. It should be strong enough. These are beams and yeah. beams are uh, the strongest part. Like I always explain, it's the shoulder of the human body. Mm -hmm. So it has to have all the strength. Engineer is standing on it for you to see. You should be able wow. to walk on without any of the stirrups or rings bending. And then the there there is a reason why because the, 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 the space are evenly distributed okay that was intentional ensure. yes okay they're supposed to be at 10050 centers okay or 1050 centers let, let me put it well right so that's how it's supposed to be if it is not that way when he stands on it the weight mm -hmm. the stars will not be able to carry the carry weight. his weight yeah. i see and it's the same the same everywhere wow that takes a lot of attention to detail absolutely interesting but engineer desmond you mentioned something about beds for somebody that doesn't really know construction they're probably thinking you're going to 
rent ash folk to come and put here but you're speaking on concrete beds so what exactly can you give us more information on that did you sleep on a bed today i did how does a bed look like it normally is flat yes please. and then you sleep on mm -hmm. right yeah it's the same thing you're talking about in construction okay so at this point where he's standing at this, we cannot even walk here mm -hmm. when the whole place is flat and we can be able to walk on we are getting a bed oh okay i see so when after, when they fill it when it's going fill to it, be when we fill flat. it we are still going to have some you cannot be able to walk mm -hmm. as, as as much as you want mm -hmm. these things are going to cause an obstruction yeah. like we we're explaining the concrete will end here mm -hmm. we we'll have 0 0.15 to yes, be able please. to cut uh, cast so definitely you're not going to move freely mm -hmm. then when the final concrete comes and sits on top Oh, where you have a flat, flat surface, surface. Oh, that's what we call the bed the concrete bed i see. Oh, okay now they explain <laughs> exactly. it like that i get the i can see the picture clearly exactly. so it's just flat all around exactly that's the bed the bed exactly. and from there where do you go from there now we move to the first superstructure okay the blocks will now start flying mm -hmm. and then from there now we go again to another beam another slab another bed again yeah. For the first flow, then the second superstructure will continue again. Mm -hmm. Then we are now hitting the roof, mm -hmm. and any other thing will follow. I see. So after here, you're going to be now seeing where the doors are going to be, okay. where windows are going to be. At this stage, you don't see anything. You don't see much. Yeah. The only thing, perhaps, that we may introduce or we will introduce before the the bed is casted mm -hmm. is we will implant some pipes. Okay. And I will explain what happens again when when we get there. Mm -hmm. You realize that our methodology is different from the west okay we'll explain why ours is different mm -hmm. and what uh, informs our decisions on what we should do over here the type of pipes that we are supposed to use the class yeah. o the class b we'll explain all that at that stage so when it comes to construction do you have the same methodology for every building or when it comes to specific buildings do you have specifications for them I'll let engineer take it further now. I'll Mr. add George. on. There are many procedures in going about the building. Yeah. But then depending on what specific building you are doing mm -hmm. and the procedure you have to develop okay. to use for that building. Okay. So let me, let me add on to this. Uh -huh. First off, most people in our part of the world, mm -hmm. we skip certain processes. Okay. Before even somebody is supposed to design your building, mm -hmm. they're supposed to be what we call soil test. Yes. Now, if the soil it's not good enough mm -hmm. for you to have because the, the soil test will determine the type of foundation that you're supposed to have yeah so all over our uh, part of the world people are always going for the ordinary strip foundation, foundation. but there are other buildings where you have to employ either a raft foundation a pile and beam foundation yeah. So it depends on what you're going for. Yeah. In fact in some buildings you just have to do the part foundation mm -hmm. with the pillars hang your building have the flow done before you continue with the build or you start the building okay now it's not the same method everywhere okay again you look at the topography of your land mm -hmm. if you are building on the slopey side it's not the same as being on a flat land like this okay so there are variations there, there, are, there are various methods we can choose to even do concrete from the foundation up to this stage it can be reinforced concrete throughout depending on what you want to achieve yeah we can have, uh, 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 how do you call it, retaining walls mm -hmm. all, through, uh, all throughout the building and all. So it depends. So okay. we don't have the same specifications. Okay. That is why it is dangerous mm -hmm. to entrust your building in the hands of a mason mm -hmm. who will tell you I've been in the industry for 30 years. <laughs> for 30 years. <laughs> for 25 years. Yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the mason uh -huh. has his level right. in the building chain okay the engineer has his level in the building chain mm -hmm. the architect the draughtsman mm -hmm. the structural engineer right. everybody has a role to play okay if you don't play the roles well mm -hmm. it will come hunting you tomorrow true thank you i see one final question before we run away um some someone has been asking me a lot of times that most of our sites are based in debris and then we're doing construction for some clients they're asking how favorable has the weather been to you because some people feel like Ebri is very rain prone so when you're building it's going to interfere with your you know your process and all of that how how receptive has the, the weather been here the, the weather 
actually breeze mm-hmm. quite conducive mm-hmm. in terms of construction and living. Okay. So we all know the rainy season in Ghana, mm-hmm. uh, usually from June to July, yeah. Ghana is so intense. But then you can schedule your, your building, mm-hmm. you can schedule how to construct. Mm-hmm. So you avoid the rainy of your Right. Activities. So you plan properly you, and everything when you works plan properly, out. You can go about I it. see. Well, that's wonderful. Guys, you've had all of the updates here. Definitely when they move from this level, we will come and then get more content on it. If you have specific, you know, questions, if there's something you had that you want more clarity on, we prioritize teaching and sharing of information and knowledge. So whatever it is you want to inquire, please leave your question in the comment section. Our ABLE engineers are always available to answer all of them because we all need to learn and go hand in hand. Subscribe to the channel, share the link, like the video. We'll be back with more. Bye.